Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Vanessa Joy and today we are comparing the R5 and the brand spanking new Canon EOS R3. I'm the only one who's had these two cameras for quite some time and I have been racking up not only a ton of shots with the R3, but a ton of different comparisons. I've shot, at least from today, two weddings with both the R5 and R3, lots of shots of them comparing the two, and now I'm shooting a styled shoot in what looks like Italy. It's not, it's just north of Austin, Texas in Via Antonia, and we are really doing a ton of side-by-side -side comparisons between the two. So we are here with our gorgeous model, Kat, who's gonna let us photograph her with two cameras and a bunch of different lenses. So let's start going. Let's start with the R5 and a 50. And I just, I love all this white because then we'll be able to really make her eyes pop and her outfit pop. So let's work with that. I'm gonna have you take a few steps back. I wanna avoid these hot spots here. So right about there, that should be good. Let's get my initial exposure and then we'll make sure we're doing the same exposure on both cameras. So that really gives you a good idea of, you know, quality and everything. So right now I am at 100 ISO, F2 and 250th of a second. So just kind of like get your thumbs in your jeans maybe. Perfect. That looks great. Love it. Beautiful. And then let's go ahead and switch cameras. So I'm going to take the R3. Let's just first thing set it to the exact same exposure which I said was F2, 250th of a second, 100 ISO. And I am, oh, by the way, don't do what I just did. I just took the lens off without turning the camera off. Huge no-no, because when you turn the camera off, the sensor closes, the shutter closes, so your sensor is not exposed. Okay. Now I am gonna go ahead and enable eye control because that's one of the big features of this camera. She's a little bit overexposed, so I am gonna raise my shutter speed so we get better exposure. Beautiful, absolutely love it. And let's face it, I can tell absolutely nothing different from the back of the camera, but I can tell you that that eye autofocus worked perfectly. I didn't have to press a focus button of any kind. I just looked through the viewfinder, looked at her eyeball, and that's what focused. And the cool thing is I can still check my comp uh, composition because once I look at her eyeball and I press the shutter button halfway down, it's gonna lock and track on where I was. And I continue looking around my frame to do things like make sure her hands are all in frame uh, and that my composition is correct because that's what we do as photographers. You know, we kind of look at our focus, but then go ahead and look at everything else around and make sure it looks good. And maybe actually on this side, because then you can kind of be like in the corner and like hang here. I'm not a model, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> there we go. See, she's just like, no, Vanessa, this, this is how you do it. So I want to use a reflector because I love how she turned her head down towards the banister, but because she did that, then I didn't get any light in her eyes. So we're gonna fix that. And I'm gonna use a gold reflector. One, because I don't have silver, so we're gonna use the gold one, but it's also going to be a little bit brighter, get a little bit more specular in her face, which are gonna make her eyes pop. So let's give that a try. Let's see if I can hold this, because that is the benefit of this. Oh, where is my light? There it is. She's like, yeah, right where it blinds me. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful, absolutely love it. Good, cool. These are nice close-ups of her face, so I'm gonna swap, swap over to the R3. I have to say, I have these both set to auto white balance. I am definitely noticing a difference between what it thinks the white balance should be here. Not that that's a huge deal one way or the other, but it's an interesting thing to note. Go uh, and look like right here. Yes, beautiful. Nice. Nice and eyes up a little. Yes, that's really good. Beautiful. That looks great. I'm wondering if I could get, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm <just> sorry. <laughs> yeah. He's being blinded. 
now that we've got a bunch of different shots, let's look at these files really close. I have a ton of different ones to show you because I actually shot real jobs with these. And I'll let you know what I think about shooting with this baby and the R5. Self-recording, my favorite thing, my favorite thing. Actually, these cameras are my favorite thing. All right, let's get the consensus, the analysis. I have been using these two cameras, the Canon R5 and the R3 side by side for months now. That's why I have so many pictures of side by side examples that I can show you. And you look back at the R5 release video I did for Canon, the one that I did for my own YouTube channel. And the question that I keep getting asked is, what are you gonna end up shooting? Should I buy the R3 or should I buy the R5? And I always go back to this, which is the right tool for the job. Now, some of the things I love about the R5, 45 megapixels, just straight off the bat, I love 45 megapixels. I love being able to crop in quickly. I set my custom button to it here where it quickly goes to the crop aspect ratio mode and then I can go to a 1.6 crop. So I'm walking around with my 135 millimeter F2 and it's acting like a 200 2 for much less weight. I love that. I don't necessarily think that's an argument for the overall quality of the camera because 24.1 megapixels is great. I've been shooting with the 1DX series for quite some time. I mean, you look at the R6, for example, the R6 has around that size and it's perfectly fine for weddings. It's actually what a lot of my second shooters buy. So there's that. Next up, we have speed. Speed isn't a huge thing with me, but there's definitely a difference between the two. I don't typically shoot on burst mode really of any kind. I just don't, I'm a one shot girl. <laughs> oh God. Please somebody make a joke about that. Anyway, I'm a one shot girl and I don't spray and pray. I just don't do it. So that's not huge, but that might be a factor for you. The R3 is great in low light. And as a wedding photographer, that's a situation that I'm in a lot. Not only is it great in low light when it comes to high ISO performance, but it's great in low light when it comes to the EVF. If I had my way, I would have those capabilities in the R5. Now, I don't know if that's a possibility when it comes to a firmware upgrade to have that shutter drag, basically frame rate suppression for the EVF so you don't get that dragginess, but there's also faster focusing when it comes to low light situations, especially for those of us that are shooting events. Shooting events with a combination of the way that this camera handles low light and the eye control autofocus, that is gold. That right there is key because what often happens when I am using the R5 is the fact that I'll be looking around, they're all touch and drag, which by the way, is something I absolutely miss in the R3, there's no touch and drag. But when I am photographing a reception, you know, it's searching for a face, searching for a face. And often at a reception, there's a lot of faces and it's gonna go to faces that I don't want it to capture. With the R3, that one, definitely captures what I want to capture because I'm putting my eyeball where I wanted to focus and it works really well in low light. So those are my main sticking points with the two of them. Before I give you my final decision, let me take a commercial break to edit some of those R5, R3 photos that we just took side by side because I know I showed you straight out of camera photos until this point and I think if you're gonna compare the two cameras, you need to look at the files and how they edit, right? Yeah? Okay, so let's just do that real quick. Here I have a whole bunch of R5 and R3 images. All of the ones with the red on the bottom corner are, <laughs> are the R3 images. And the ones that don't have anything there, those are the R5 images. Right off the bat by looking at this, I will tell you I was in auto white balance pretty, <laughs> pretty much the entire time with the exception of these two right here. Actually, I may have left it on auto white balance for those. So the biggest thing that I notice right now is the difference between the auto white balance. And that was one of the things that Canon said that they improved was the white balance in, oh my God, it was the white balance in the R3. It's improved auto white balance and looking at these photos, you can see it. You definitely can see it. You see it, oh God, you see it especially uh, in these two images right here. Look at those two side by side. These are unedited photos, these are RAWs. So raw file from the R5 and then converted to DNG file from the R3 because Adobe can't read the raw file yet. 
But one of the things that they said was how the white balance performs in the greens. And look at this picture. You can see this clear as day, how much more appropriate, at least to where I would want it to be, the greens and the white balance is on the R3 image. That is just undeniable right there. Okay, so let's look at these. Uh, let's, I don't know, let's just go here. Another one with the, with the greens. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead, let's go into the develop module and just throw on my joyfully simple preset, which is easily one of my favorites. So this is the R3, this image. I will say the white balance is definitely a little bit cool here. All right, that's probably where I would go with that one. And then here, you know what? I'm just gonna hit previous. So we look at like the exact settings that I did for the other and how it performs here on the raw. Very interesting looking actually at the two of those. Definitely more um, contrast here, which aside from how the camera's reading the situation, I don't think there's a difference uh, in how I took those two photos. So definitely interesting to note there. That's probably more where it would be. I got a weird haze thing going on here. So let's just go to dehaze. So there's the R5, there's the R3. Uh, this I thought would be a good example to look at. Uh, this is the R5 image. Let's just go for like bright and vibrant. Let's go for crazy colorful. It's another one of the presets here, appropriate really for only situations like this, maybe some landscapes. It is, look, look at this, it's a black hole. What, is it the end of the world coming? Who's pulling in my driveway? Very nosy. Okay, now we got the R3. Let's go ahead and put that crazy colorful on. And then we've got these two side by side. You know, I'm, I'm liking the way the, the R3, yeah, look at the red dot. The R3 picked up more of these colors. Look how it picked up more of these colors of what was going on. I mean, the orange is still there here. I would say this, because um, it was a rotating up lighting situation. So don't look at so much like the purple that's there or not, but the orange, both in the chandelier and here, you definitely pick more up. And I'm pretty sure the exposures were appropriately spot on between the two because look at the sky. The sky is the same, but what it's pulling from the rest of it is definitely coming up more in the R3. Interesting. Okay, so let's look at two reception photos side by side. Uh, and this is a perfect example where I was using eye autofocus and just able to focus exactly where I wanted to on the mother of the bride here. Let's go to develop, cool. Um, so it did not focus on her, which if I had the R5, I think it probably would have focused more on her because she was closer to the camera. So let's just go, let's just go fresh and clean. That kind of brightens things up a little bit. Put fresh and clean here. That might over brighten it, but let's find out. My computer is so slow. It's so mad at me right now. It's like, why are you comparing these two? All right, um, but these two side by side, let's look at the noise. We should look at the noise between the two of these because they both have kind of like a, you know, unexposed correctly parts. Let's just zoom in right here. All right, there's something to zoom into. All right there, there we go. Cool, this right there. Okay, that's what we want to look at. And then let's see, so this is the noise in the R3, this one right here. Of course, our noise reduction can do wonders. So let's just do that. And then look at the noise here in a darker part of the R5 image. And let me get to like similar colors. Let's just zoom that out a little bit. There we go. Kind of like similar colors with like the blues and stuff right there. Let's go back, let's go back because I feel like you want to see not noise reduced here, all right? And they're zoomed in, so like this is zoomed in 200%, right? And this is zoomed in 200%. So let's just go back and forth between these two, zoomed in at 200%. Oh, I guess I should just put them side by side. Can I do that? Lightroom again, let me put them side by side, zoomed in. Nope, you're really not. Okay, maybe we can. No, it really is just not gonna let me. Uh, I'm sure one of you will tell me how to do that. But I think going back and forth, like, okay, there it is, popped clear. And to here, maybe right there, we can see kind of a better. 
I don't know. I mean, they're pretty comparable. I would say, I think I see the noise a little bit more in the R5, which makes sense because the R3 behaves better in low light. So there's that. Okay, moving on. Yeah, biggest difference I'm noticing is really just in the white balance here. One thing to note, the R5, this was taken at 1600. This photo was taken at 2500, which is interesting because they look about the same as far as that clarity goes. Let's just zoom in, let's zoom in maybe, let's go 200. I'm right about here. I think we can see a good amount of detail. There's the R3 at 2,500, and here's the R5. Wow, that is clean. It really is incredible looking at these images side by side. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Okay, uh, these two, I wanna look more at the color. You know, when we have that white background, I'm really not even seeing many difference there. All right, let's move on. And here we've got two side by side. Now this one, I want to, now this was definitely taken a little bit lighter than this one. So there's that to consider, but let me just put my Joyfully Simple preset on here. Uh, because what I want to do, in addition to just making it look the way I want to look, I want to mess around with how much of the sky we can bring in, right? So this is the R5 and it was an overexposed image in general, but let's just bring down the highlights and the whites and see what we got. Okay, uh, by the way, this was a completely foggy day. Like today, literally, look at this. I was exposed. Anyway, well, well. Um, okay, so that's the R5 and we'll be able to bring back the detail on the foggy day where it was white out right there. Let's look at it on here. Tons of detail, tons of detail in there. Yes, sweetie. Hi. Hi, baby. I love you. You going outside? <sighs> Gotta love working with the kids. All right, here's two side by side. I think I'm just gonna kind of go through these for you guys. Because um, aside from editing a few different ones and zooming in, I think we saw the most, most of the comparisons by now. Here's another one for white balance. This is the R5. This is the R3. Again, a little bit of a difference when it comes to exposure, but if we just kind of match them, you can definitely see a difference in how uh, the white balance performs. Yeah, a little bit more magenta happening on the R3 here than than over with the R5. All right, these I thought were two good ones to compare it to. This is the R5 image. This is the R3 image where I really just did funky things with the skin tones because my ultimate goal was to bring it down probably around here. I still wanna make it warm, but I wanted to kind of exaggerate what was going on there. So I, I gelled them a bit uh, and we can just take a look. I really do like how the skin tones are managed in the R3. I, re I enjoy the skin tones so much more. Like look how much more orange kind of the skin tones are in the R5 versus the R3 has much more of a neutral effect. Let's take a look at these portraits now. We have R3, R5. A little bit of exposure difference. So let me just bump this up slightly so we can get a look. Again, I'm loving the white balance of the R3. I just like the way that the skin tones look. So this one's R3, this is R5. Now there is a big difference in what I thought the white balance should be. And I do wonder if I, I had set the white balance a little bit differently. Uh, yeah, it looks like, well, this is at 4,400 and this was at 38. So let's just match them up and then we can tell a little bit more where the skin tones are. And then let's go ahead and make that seven so it kind of matches. And then there's two photos that are really good in a comparison as far as the color and quality of each one of those images. And then of course, if we come in here, let's just zoom it in. Zoom it in. Let's go 200, 200%. There we go. That is the R5. That's the R3. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Am I reading that right? 
Okay, yeah, R3, I'm sorry, R5 right here. And yeah, there's my DNG. That's the R3 at 200%. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. That's, wow. Let's go more. Let's go 400%. R5, R3, R5, R3. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Now I just gotta keep going. R5, R3. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then this last one here, I already showed you this one. And that was really the difference in the white balance, huge difference there. And then this is just an R3 shot I thought would be good to show because it is in a low light situation. Um, well, not super low light. Um, oh, it wasn't low light. I actually used more of a slower shutter speed. I was shooting with the 28 to 70 and all the way down at 1 25th of a second, just so I didn't have to go as high as I needed to normally for the uh, ISO. So let's go ahead and see how we did on the camera shake situation. Nope, looking good. All right, so that's it. I hope that was helpful to you to take a look at all of these. I know that's a lot to look through, but I think there were some pretty good points, mostly with white balance uh, and definitely the color in these and uh, the noise and a lot of things to look at. Zooming into these two, lots to look at and consider. So I guess we better get to my final decision. All right, you're back. You're back for the final verdict. What is it? What would I do? Well. Wedding professionals, or really most professional photographers, have two cameras, right? If I were shooting with, let's just say a 5D4, or I'm shooting with a 1DX3, and I knew I wanted to move over into the mirrorless line or move up, I would choose, and it might not be budget friendly, no, I know it's not, definitely not budget friendly, um, but ultimately, the combination between these two cameras is gold, literally, because how much does that cost all together? Like $12,000, $11,000. So it literally is like gold. Um, the weight is about the same though, just something to consider if you're putting the battery pack on. But if you're not a battery pack person, then the R3 is gonna help you out there. But putting these two side by side as a two camera shooter event wedding professional, these are an absolute perfect marriage for that. If you are not, a two camera shooter uh, or someone that brings a backup but then frequently uses the backup. <sighs> if I had to choose between the two, four weddings and portraits, this does not apply probably to many other genres of photography, but if I had to choose, wrong. Let me tell you the best tool for the job that you're doing because you clearly don't know it. Ma! The meatloaf! I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the EOS R5 and the new Canon EOS R3. Tell me, are you an R5 shooter and you want to go to an R3? Are you shooting with an R6 and thinking about going to the R3? Or maybe you're still DSLR and wondering which of these cameras you're going to jump to when you move to mirrorless. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think now that we've looked at these two side by side.